Hello YouTubers, this is Cessna Ace, back again with another video, another 15 games video, where I show 15 games from my collection. Now I'm currently still concentrating on games for the NES, and I will be for some time. I won't be switching to another system until I've shown all the games that I have for the NES. Now in this video, I'm only going to be showing games from unlicensed publishers, American Video, Comerica, Color Dreams, and Wisdom Tree. I won't be getting to Tengen, I know most people say Tengen, but I pronounce it Tengen, releases until the video after this one. And then after that, I will be showing the remainder of the games that I have that are in standard Nintendo cartridges. I still have some homebrews and some hacks that I haven't shown that are in standard cartridges. When I get to the standard cartridges, I will be showing those in alphabetical order. Now, first up, Comerica. Now, the thing about Comerica is their releases came in one of two ways. One, the cartridge would be complete with everything inside needed to play on a standard Nintendo Entertainment System. And the other would have the cartridge pretty much gutted, only having well, basically the game code. Everything else needed to play in a, a uh, NES would require the use of the Aladdin Deck Enhancer. Now, I don't have an Aladdin Deck Enhancer, so I don't have any of those cartridges. All of my cartridges have everything inside needed to play them. Now, I'm not going to push in so far that... Uh, my camera loses focus. Plus which, none of my Comerica cartridges look all that good. They're complete. They just don't look all that good. They look well worn. I've never seen a Comerica cartridge anywhere out in the wild that had the original box. Much less a manual. Now, another feature of Comerica cartridges is this dip switch. Now, it states on that printed label there to try position A first, and only if that doesn't work, try position B. Now, I always use position A. Now, I've read different uh, explanations as to what this whole switch thing is about. Both kind of make sense. One is that you use this in an attempt to bypass the NES lockout chip. If the A position doesn't work, you switch to the B position because Nintendo did alter that chip, I believe, during the run of the NES. I don't think the Model 2 NES even looked for the lockout chip. And I do have a Model 2 in addition to the Model 1s that I have. None of the Model 1s work, but I have a Model 2, the top loader. The other explanation as to what that switch is for is to switch between NTSC compatibility and PAL. Now, as I don't have any PAL equipment, I can't test that theory or that explanation. All of the releases that I have from Comerica were originally designed in the UK by Codemasters such as this one and the one I just showed you. This is Big Nose the Caveman. Now it's strange for Tintin, for example, I have several duplicates of some of the releases. I have no duplicates when it comes to America. Okay. Lately, Atari Age has been publishing official, licensed ports of the Dizzy games to the Jaguar, the Atari Jaguar. I don't think they've gotten to this one, though. The, uh, the Fantastic Adventures of Dizzy. But they have stated on their site, in the forums, that they're going to be releasing all of the Dizzy games for the Jaguar in limited runs. 
And once they're sold out, I, I don't believe they're going to be making any more. I have one of them, in fact, already. And there's another one on their site that they're taking pre-orders for. Okay, next up we have Firehawk. Another thing about these Comerica cartridges is they don't stack very well. After about five, they, they try to fall over. Micro machines. Now the U.S. did get more NES releases than any other country. And that was and due in large part probably to the fact that there were so many unlicensed publishers. But it seemed like Tengen, aka Atari Games, was the one they went after Nintendo with the most uh, gumption. I believe I have this game for PC. Big box release on floppy disks. I might be thinking of another game, but I don't think so. This is MiG-29 Soviet Fighter. Codemasters did have their games published for multiple platforms, including PC and all the various microcomputers of the day. Okay, now, if I'm not mistaken, there were three games in the Quattro series. I only have two of them. The Quattro cartridges, living up to their name, each have four games. This is Quattro Adventure. The games are Boomerang Kid, Super Robin Hood, Treasure Island Dizzy, which has been released for the Jaguar, and Linus Spacehead. I believe one of the things that I posted at Patreon slash Cessna Ace is um, a complete list of all of the homebrew ports for the Jaguar. <sighs> Games that were ported, that is, from the Atari ST computer to the Jaguar. And that list is long. By the way, shout outs to uh, some of my patrons. Uh, Bamser, about Bamsey, and a, a big shout out to Daniel, who I don't believe has a channel on YouTube, which is why he's always listed in the description with an asterisk, I mean the pound sign instead of the uh, at sign, uh, the others do have channels. But Daniel is uh, supporting me with the most money. <laughs> All right. Quattro Sports. They don't list the title of the games on the label. But one is a baseball game, one is a soccer game, one is a tennis game, and one is a motocross game. I believe the one that I am missing is Quattro uh, Action. Okay. Ultimate Stuntman. Now, let's see, that should be nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Moving on to American Video. I don't have any duplicates for these either. I only have two releases from them. The first. Dudes with Attitude. They helpfully have an arrow. They know which way to point the cartridge. And a little red dot that says, press here. So if you have the 
model one, insert it that way, and then you grab the red dot and pull it out that way. You have a top loader, obviously that way, that way. At the time I got my model two, the top loader, they were going for uh, some crazy money because they're reliable. The model one isn't. Okay, this label is in bad shape. Impossible Mission 2. It's just dirty. And everything I've you tried to use to clean cartridge labels, I've wound up doing more harm than good, so I've stopped doing that. Okay, that's 10, 11. Switching now to Wisdom Tree. This is, they uh, published uh, religious themed games. And if I'm not mistaken, they're still around, except they release games for PC. The same games, I think. This is uh, Joshua. Now they give you this procedure to follow. Power on. Please wait seven seconds between power off and on. To start game, please wait up to nine flashes on TV screen. One of the crazy things they were doing back then to try to bypass that ship. Okay, next we have Journey to the Promised Land, Exodus. Or is that X is turning to the promised land? I don't know. But this one is one that is not only in pretty good condition, but I have a duplicate copy of. Okay. Spiral true. Sp spiritual. Spiritual Warfare. Now, the same company had a different name. And off the top of my head, I can't remember which came first, Wisdom Tree or Color Dreams. This is a Color Dreams release. Master Chew and the Drunkard Hue. I have one more Color Dreams game. Should I go ahead and show it? Because if I don't, it'll throw off my 10 Gen video. So this will be 15 plus 1. This is actually a cartridge that I got from the NES dump when they were around. This is a reproduction of an unreleased but completed prototype. Escape from Atlantis. And they used, the NES, NES Stump did, an actual Color Dreams cartridge. Okay, so... 15 plus 1, and I had given thought to recording a third video tonight, but two is enough. If you haven't seen the other one that I posted tonight, it was um, my current, the current state of my homebrew collection of loose cartridges for the Atari 7800. My next video is either going to be 15 games, another 15 games video, or it's going to be a 15 comics video because I haven't done one of those in some time. Until next time, stay awesome.